In this video, we're taking a look at the x is small approximation that we use in ice table problems in chemistry. So I'm assuming you know how to set up an ice table, you know how to solve an ice table problem, but this is gonna give you a tool that you can use whenever you get an answer that's gonna require the quadratic formula. It's a way to skip that. But before we get into that, we need to take a look at a thought experiment that's gonna help us understand why this x is small approximation would be valid in the first place. So we'll do this thought experiment with this question. What is 0.135 minus 0 0.000005? And specifically, what's the answer to that in chemistry class? Not in math class. I'll explain what I mean in a second. So if I was doing the subtraction problem, I would set it up 0.135 minus, and then I'll line up all my zeros there, 0 0.000005. And in math class, if you did this subtraction, you're gonna get a value of 0.134995. You've assumed that these are zeros, back after that five in the 0.135. But you're watching this video to learn chemistry, so we're interested in what is this answer in chemistry class. And in chemistry, numbers are tied to a measurement. And when we end that number, like 0.135, and we end it, that means that's the last digit that we have any certainty on. In fact, the last digit's always uncertain too. But these digits after that we know for sure are uncertain. We don't know what they are. So if you were doing the subtraction, it would be like mystery number minus five gives us what? Well. Mystery number minus five gives us a mystery number. We couldn't know what this number is. So we just, we wouldn't write anything there. And the same thing here and the same thing here. And we really wouldn't start our subtraction until we get to right here. And that's gonna leave us with 0.135 minus 0 0.000 and we would get 0.135. So I'll rewrite that as 0.135 and that would be my answer in chemistry class. But take a look at this. It's kind of an interesting thing that happens here. 0.135 minus this very, very small number that's much less than 0.135 gives us an answer of still 0.135. So the takeaway is a number minus a very, very small number gives us that original number again. That concept is gonna come up in our first problem, which we'll go ahead and go through right now. It says, what are the equilibrium concentrations of a 2.0 molar solution of HC2H3O2, which is acetic acid. And it gives us the dissociation of acetic acid. Acetic acid is gonna break down into H plus, plus acetate ion. And of course, it's an equilibrium reaction because these can recombine to form acetic acid again. We have our Ka value, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. It's a very small K value, right? Times 10 to the negative fifth. That's gonna come up, it's gonna be very important for our x is small approximation. We'll talk about that more in a minute. Now, if I was writing this problem on my own paper, I would rewrite all of this. Instead of putting C2H3O2, I'm just gonna replace that with A. That notation saves us a little bit of time. So this is our acetic acid, HA, in equilibrium with H+, plus, plus the conjugate base of the acid, which is A-. minus. So this is our HA, that's our H+, plus, that's our A-. minus. So let's set up our ice table. If you don't know how to do that, check out my video on how to do ice table problems. I'll link that in the description. And let's sub in our concentrations here. It's a 2.0 molar solution of the acetic acid. Anytime we have an acid problem like this, that's a dissociation like that, we're gonna put that amount under the acid. And we're gonna assume that these both start at zero. And of course, at equilibrium, those aren't gonna be zero. There's gonna be some amount of H plus and some amount of A minus. And that's what we're trying to figure out from this. If we just have HA, that's gonna decrease by some variable. We don't know how much it decreases by, so we'll put minus X. It's a one to one to one ratio. And so if those are minus X on the left, that's the change. The change for the ions are gonna be plus X and plus X. And then I'll rewrite our equilibriums, two minus X, X and X. And so our equilibrium amounts are right here, but of course there's an X in there, so we don't know what those actual concentrations are yet. Of course, in any ice table problem, we're gonna be solving for some equilibrium concentrations probably, and we can set up our K expression in order to help us find those. So let's set up our K expression. K is equal to H plus times A minus divided by the concentration of HA. Just remember, it's the products divided by the reactants. You notice our K value is K sub A. The A just means this is an acid dissociation or an acid breaking down into two ions. And so our K has that special little subscript A, which is different than maybe you've seen with like KC or KEQ or KP. Now I'm gonna substitute in my equilibrium values right here into my K expression. So let me substitute in values that I know. So I know my K is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And I have my values I'm gonna substitute in for the equilibrium here. And I get X squared on the top because it's X times X divided by two minus X. So your first instinct is gonna to be to multiply by two minus X here to cancel that out, multiply by two minus X here. And so you're gonna get something that looks like this. And if you continue with this, you're gonna end up with a quadratic. You've got an X squared term, you're gonna multiply this 
by two and get some value. You can multiply this by negative x and get a term with x in it. So you've got a quadratic that's gonna be kind of difficult to solve. You'll need to use the quadratic formula in order to solve that, and we totally could, that would work. But the problem with the quadratic formula is it takes a lot of time. Luckily, we have the x is small approximation, which we can use here so we can avoid the quadratic formula. And specifically on the AP Chemistry test, they're never gonna ask you to use the quadratic formula because that's gonna take up so much of your time. They make all these problems so that you can use the x's small approximation, or they make it to where it's just easy to solve for x with just some standard algebra. So as soon as you see you've got a quadratic coming up, it's time to get rid of that quadratic and use the x's small approximation. So here's what that means. First thing we need to look at is our k value. Our k value is very small. Let's think about what that means when the k value is small. The k is products over reactants. So when the k is very big, you have pretty much all products. And when the k is very, very small, you have pretty much only reactants. In other words, a small k means this has to be very big and these have to be very small. So you just have reactants and very little products. We've got a very small k, right? It's 10 to the negative fifth, so it's 0 0.000018. I like to compare that to my starting concentration. My starting concentration is 2.0. My equilibrium concentration is 0 0.000018. So that's a difference of like four zeros between those or four orders of magnitude between those two numbers. As long as you've got like two or three zeros difference between those, the x is small approximation is gonna work. And here's why it works. We're starting with two molar. We're subtracting this, but we just said that we're not gonna lose much of this. It's a very, very tiny amount of this two molar that's gonna convert into the ions. And so this is gonna be a very, very small number, much smaller than two. And remember in the intro of this video, if we take a number minus a much, much smaller number, we still just have that original number. This could be like 2.0 minus 0 0.00005, which is still just gonna be 2.0. In other words, we can say that because X is much smaller than two, the double less than sign means much, much smaller, not just smaller, but much, much smaller. Because our Ka is so small, we can use that x approximation that it's much less than two. And so we can rewrite this two minus x and just say that that is two. So let's do that. 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth equals x squared divided by two instead of divided by two minus x. Quick thing to point out, notice I did not get rid of these x's right here because they're not subtracted from some bigger number. They're multiplied together. And when you multiply by a very small number, that very much changes the number. So we keep those, we get rid of that minus x. And I recommend in a problem that you do, always writing something that kind of indicates what you're doing here, that you're not just dropping that minus x for no reason, but you've identified that x is much smaller than this other number, so then you can drop it. From there, we'll just solve for x, and so we'll multiply by two on both sides, take the square root of it, and we'll get 0 0.006. And then from there, we can substitute those back into our equilibrium values and find those equilibrium concentrations. So two minus 0 0.006 is still gonna be just 2.0 molar. In math class, the answer would be 1.994, I think. But when you round it to two significant figures here, you're still just going to get 2.0. And then our H plus concentration and our A minus concentration are going to be the same. Those are equal to X, which is 0 0.0060 molar. So that's how we use the X of small approximation in a problem like this. This was an acid dissociation. I'm going to show you one more example here. Problem number two, we're gonna take a look at what is the molar solubility of silver chloride in a solution of 0 0.10 molar sodium chloride. And I'm given the dissolution equation here of the solid silver chloride, and it's gonna break down into those silver ions and chloride ions and become aqueous because you're dissolving it in water. You're taking a solid, you're dissolving it in water according to this reaction. Now, depending on when you're studying this, you might not have learned solubility yet. So I'm gonna kind of break down this and give you a little bit of a taste of stuff upcoming in solubility. But the reason I'm using this problem is so you see another example of when the x is small approximation is going to apply. Also, just to point out, this is an example of a common ion effect type of problem. All right, so what is this even asking? It's asking for the molar solubility of silver chloride. That means how much of the silver chloride is going to dissolve into this solution right here. Or to simplify that a bit, it's always asking for the x in your ice table problem. Molar solubility is always gonna be the x value in your ice table problem. But we also have some sodium chloride right here. So I'm gonna start off by setting up my ice table. I'm gonna use the, the dissolution for silver chloride here because I'm interested in the molar solubility of silver chloride. And remember in ice tables and K expressions and stuff, whenever we have a solid or a liquid, like a solvent liquid, 
we're not going to use those in our expression or our ice table. So I can X out that, and I'm just left with the silver and the chloride. And then I need to figure out what are my initial values of each of these. And so I can look at my problem here, and it says it's in a solution of 0.1 molar sodium chloride. So my solution is starting with 0.1 molar sodium chloride. I take a look at sodium. There's no sodium involved here in this reaction, so I'm not worried about sodium. Take a look at chloride. Well, there are chloride ions in the dissolution of silver chloride. So this 0.1 molar of chloride ions is going to be my starting concentration of chloride. Silver in this solution, there's no silver, so my silver concentration will be zero. So I'm going to write zero molar for silver and then 0.10 molar for the chloride. And again, the chloride, 0.1 molar, is coming from the fact that I'm adding this silver chloride into a 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution. That's where those chloride ions are coming from. Now, I've added the silver chloride. That means that some of the silver chloride is going to become Ag+. I don't know how much yet, so I put plus X. And these are reacting, and these are produced in a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's going to be plus X for both of those. All right, I can write my equilibrium values there, which is X and 0.1 plus X. And then I can write my K expression. Now, if you notice, it says KSP. The SP stands for solubility product because this is a solubility problem. And if you look for my K expression, it's going to end up just being a product. I've got silver times chloride, and we're not dividing by this because it's a solid. So in solubility problems like this, you end up with a K expression that doesn't divide by anything. It's just a product or a multiplication. So our KSP, or solubility product, equals silver times chloride ions. From there, I'm going to substitute in the values that I know. So my KSP is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. Notice that's a very small KSP, so hopefully you can see where I'm going to be going with this in this problem. That's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th. And then I'll substitute in these equilibrium values for silver and chloride. And I get X for silver and 0.1 minus X for chloride. Now take a look at this. I've ended up with a quadratic again. I've got this value right here. I've got this constant. I've got X times 0.1, which will give me a term with one X in it. And then I've got negative X times X when I distribute this. So I'm going to have a term with X squared in it. I've got a three term quadratic. I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. And I'm feeling a little bit lazy. I don't want to do that. Not lazy, but I want to save time and not mess with the quadratic formula. And luckily, my k value is very, very small times 10 to the negative 10th, which is much smaller than this 0.1 right here. So what I can do, I can recognize that the k is really small. That means I'm not going to produce very much of this chloride ion or silver ion. So in other words, my x is going to be small, and this x right here is going to be very small. So 0.1 minus this very, very small number is going to be just that 0.1 again. So I can rewrite this as 1.6 times 10 to the negative 10th equals x times 0.1. And from there, it's super easy to solve. I just divide by 0.1 on both sides, and my x is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now think about that. What is 0.1 minus 0.000000000016? Well, that's just going to be basically 0.1 still. So my assumption here of the x's small approximation is valid. And remember, in a molar solubility problem, you're actually just solving for x. So my final answer here is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. I forgot to write that. Always remember your units. Let me add that right there. And if I want to know the actual concentrations, I can sub that in for these values right here. And so I'm going to get my silver concentration is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 11th molar. And my chloride concentration, well, 0.1 plus that is still just 0.10 molar. So that's the X's small approximation, which I love because it simplifies these problems and still gives us an answer that's really, really close to the actual answer, close enough that it doesn't matter. When to use this, remember you're going to use the X's small approximation in ice table problems where you've got a K value that's very small, at least two orders of magnitude or two zeros less than the concentrations you're starting with. So if all that's true and you have a K expression, when you're solving for X, you end up with a quadratic that's not easily solvable by like a square root or something like that, then you can use the X of small approximation. Take the number minus X or number plus X, drop off that X, and then solve the problem from there. All right, hope this is helpful. Have fun solving chemistry, and see you in the next video.